Good day, my friends. May God bless those of you who believe in the Word of God. I'd like to call your attention to your greatest enemy, the most vicious, the greatest, the most ambitious, the cruelest enemy you have. It's not your neighbor, your husband's mistress, or your wife's lover. No, your greatest enemy enemy is your heart, is inside of you. The heart is more cruel than anything you can imagine, anything you can see in this world. So your greatest enemy is your heart. Why, Bishop? Is my heart my greatest enemy? Do you know why? It is because your heart has anxiety, wants and aspires to be happy. And you might ask me, but Bishop, to be happy is something everybody wants. Very well, that's true. But when you give ears to the aspirations of the heart, to the desires of your heart, you become lost because the heart is cruel, it's deceitful. The heart is what makes us to feel, to feel. The devil is cruel, the devil is the enemy of men, but the heart is worse. Why is the heart worse? Because the devil speaks. And you only hear if you want, but not the heart. The heart feels. And when the heart feels the desire to be happy, no matter what it costs, and usually a person gives ears to the voice of the heart. So how many people have, have gotten married, moved by the heart, moved by the desires of the heart? The heart is the one that screams, I want to be happy, I want to be happy, I want to be happy. So the heart is the one who leads a person who is sad to go to clubs to be happy. You have depression, you're sad, a very sad person. Okay, I'm sad. So the heart says, go to the nightclubs and you'll be happy. Then you go to the nightclubs, you sing, you dance, you drink, you abuse drugs. In those moments, you become joyful. But when you go back home, you put your head against the pillow. Then comes the return. Comes that even more profound depression because the heart eluded you. It deceived you for that fun at that moment. But now your heart is in anguish. It wants more. It aspires more than what you can give. So you become depressed, you become anguished. Because you want to satisfy your heart. So when a person says, oh, I want to be happy. And because of this aspiration of being happy, you're willing to pay whatever price, even if that happiness depends on alcohol and drinking, even if that happiness depends on drugs, depends on stealing to have the things of this world quicker. Even if the heart needs to marry the wrong person, knowing that that person is not good for you. But the heart commands, I want and I want and I want. And the person attends to the voice of the heart, then the consequences come. So the heart, my friends, is the worst enemy of a human being. The worst enemy of a human being. Because the heart makes a person to have this desire, this feeling, this craving desire to take possession of that which can jeopardize that person's life. Look what God, God, the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who created the first man and woman. Look what God speaks with regards to this ferocious enemy we carry within us. Let's read the text in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful above all things 
and desperately wicked, which means the heart is more deceitful, more cruel, more wicked. It is the worst enemy we carry within our chest. And you who hear us now, how many frustrations did you have because you gave a gap to your heart, you gave way to your heart? How many people, for example, they put their passion upon a football club, be it Palmeiras, be it Santos, be it Corinthians, be it Flamengo, be it Botafogo, a person puts all his strength in that team and goes to the stadiums and fights and kills and dies because of the heart which feels that great passion for the club. I don't know what this is because when I was a boy, I wouldn't miss a single match at Maracanã. Every Sunday I would go to Maracanã to watch the match of my team. My friends, what did I gain out of this? At times I gained joy for the Sunday, but sometimes I went out with my head downcast at the stadium because my team had lost. And when my team lost, when it was losing, I wanted my team to beat up, to hurt, to injure the opponent's team in order for me to feel a bit better. No. We, we got a hiding in the match, but we beat them up. So look at the feelings of the heart. How many people love people who are worthless and they know that person who is worthless does not serve for him or her, but still moved by the heart, the person gives in, the person surrenders, the person goes over, everyone ignores everything, all the norms, the person ignores it all and gives into those passions. It's the heart. This is why, my friends, there is only one way for you to control your heart. One path alone. When you take this deceitful heart, this cruel heart, perverse heart, and you place it on the altar. When you put this evil, wicked heart and you surrender it to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you a new heart. And then your life changes. Because your heart changed, so does your life. When I see the Temple of Solomon, it has a unique beauty. Why? Because it has a project, it was projected, its blueprints was done by the Spirit of God. This replica of the Temple of Solomon was drawn by God Himself. God in the person of the Holy Spirit gave King David the project of the Temple, which later on his son built, constructed, Solomon. So it is unique from any other building, any other temple, no matter how beautiful, no matter how rich a church or temple might be or whatever that building might be, the temple of Solomon is unique. It's the only one in the world. There is no temple as like this one. This is why this Wednesday we will have the feast of the fifth birthday of the Temple of Solomon. And this is a privilege for those who believe. For those who believe. People have received the Holy Spirit just because they came to the Temple of Solomon with that faith of receiving the Spirit of the Temple, the Spirit of the altar, the Spirit of God. We shall be in this feast celebrating the fifth birthday of the Temple. My friend, God searches you right now. And I'm, and I'm sure that when He speaks, He speaks in our intellect, in our mind. So listen to the voice of God. Obey and you will see the greatness of God, His greatness in your life. And your life will never be the same again. Invest in your life because God wants you 
to be His glory in this world. May God bless you. Tomorrow we shall be back in this time. See you then.